what's the aim? The, the aim is to get a professional football contract. Um, it's something that I wanted for, uh, I can't even put years on it, it's something I wanted from such a young age that it's just all I know. Like Being in a professional sporting environment is something that I've always wanted. And for it to be in a sport that I love, like football, then yeah, that would be unbelievable. It started from Euro 1996. That was like the first major footballing championship that I watched and I was literally sat right in front of the TV and eyes glued. And uh, I remember I remember um, Gareth Southgate missing the penalty and, and England were, were knocked out and stuff. But that whole tournament was like the first real sort of enlightenment of the fact that I wanted to play professional football. Um, and then from there, I just looked to try to find a team to support. Literally, that was like all the way through primary school. I remember my first goal even in primary school. <laughs> and the, the floor was concrete. And um, I remember it was one of those lazy overhead kicks where you just sort of just lean back and your foot's just in the air. Um, but that was that was the first goal I scored. Um, I was not thinking about the fact that it's concrete and that I could hurt myself, just the fact that I did it and I put that ball and put it back in the net. But um, the more I began to play, the more I realised that, you know, I actually enjoy this a lot and this is something I definitely want to be doing when I'm older as a, as a profession and as, as a job. So, um, yeah, to do something that you love is, is, is that's the definition of happiness, I guess. Um, a lot of people don't have that, so to be able to try and find it is, it, it's a blessed opportunity. And if it happens, then awesome, I'd, you know, I'd be over the moon. If it doesn't, then the journey that I've had since that young age all the way through to now isn't wasted. It's, it's something that can be passed on to, to other generations and stuff. So, I've known Emmanuel now for about 10 years when I first started working at QPR, which was 14 years ago. He was a, one of the children that we used to coach and you could always tell from then that he had potential. Just like a lot of the children that we work with have potential, whether or not they can actually fit it or whether or not they get distracted along the way and don't reach their end goal. This journey, it gets to a point where it's, it's make or break. You either you go for it and you go for it full hearted and you, know, you, you sacrifice what you currently have or you stay comfortable. Um, and in this profession isn't about being comfortable, you've got to get out of your comfort zone. Or, as people say, think outside the box. Um, I say there is no box. You just, you just think and do. So uh, it got to the point where I had to quit my job. I was previously a personal trainer and I was doing some strength and conditioning work for a tennis academy. And it got to a point where I felt, okay, I'm helping all these other people. When's the last time I've helped myself? And I thought about it and I was like, well, I can't even put a number on it. That was like, a big step and I was reading in fact at the time I was reading a book and the book was called Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell and there was a specific section in the book uh, which basically stated that in order for one person to be a, a, an expert in their craft they have to achieve 10,000 hours and after all that calculation I was like okay I need to do it now so I had to quit and obviously when it came to you know, telling my close friends and family that what I'd done, uh, the reactions were mixed. Uh, some people would thought, you know, why, why would you do that? You, you're in a stable place, you're doing really well, um, you, you enjoy your job, it doesn't make sense now to just can it all away. Um, I think my parents who have always believed in me, uh, they, they were sort of, they were confused, they didn't understand why they didn't realize you know that i didn't really realize how much thought i put into it they thought it was just an impulse reaction um, so despite believing in me they were they were worried they just thought you know all your baby feels starting from scratch and you're not going to be you know all the work you've put over or put in the last few years have now gone to waste um, but i guess with with them i've it's a case of the less talking that I do and the more action that I produce, the more they see and the more they realise actually, well, this is what he wants. This is this is his dream and 
you know, we, we're going to do whatever we can to support that. So. Turn up. Yes. 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 The difference between a footballer that has potential and ability to a footballer that can actually turn professional is hard work and dedication. That's a cliche, but it's literally all it is. You get so many players that you can work with, your friends, your mates on the streets, on the estates, in the teams, that have got all the ability in the world, but they haven't got the hard work and dedication. You can't just want to be a footballer for the two hours that you train a week, two hours that you train a day. You have to literally eat, sleep and breathe it. Your eating, your diet, the nutrition, your stretching, uh, your personal performance, analysis. It can't just be you can do around the world, you can do 100 kickups, you can do step overs. If you want to master your art, which is the profession that you want to be a footballer, you need to be fantastic at everything that you do. So that moment that somebody speaks to you, a coach, a scout, they can tell straight away he's on it, he wants it, he wants to be a professional footballer. I guess the biggest problem with professional athletes and the injuries they sustain is just the repetitive nature of the sport and just being careful that they're not sort of using the same muscle groups over and over again. So they need to make sure they're well balanced from left to right, they need to make sure their core stability is good, they need to work on flexibility and strength. Um, and I think of late, in the last sort of 10 years, rehab and prehab, if you like, in terms of making sure that you're preventing injury and doing what you can to prevent injury has really come on. So um, I think it's, 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 it's come on a lot. Uh, most athletes probably don't spend as much time as they should in terms of injury prevention and then would probably wait until it's a little bit too late. One thing that I know of, about Emmanuel is that he is really, really driven. Um, he, he has a he has a focus and he, he kind of he, he exudes that every time through his spark training through his coaching um, and I always kind of see him um, putting out positive messages via social media and these are all things that kind of show someone that's really really um, trying to move forward and trying to do something positive more than anything um, in what through through leading by example. There are a lot of inspirations uh, you know, out there. It doesn't have to necessarily be in the field that I'm trying to you know, uh, be an expert in. And there's a guy called uh, Giovanni Ruffin who lives in the States and he's trying to make it in the NFL. He's been doing so for a while. And he had a background vocals of a, uh, a motivational speaker called Eric Thomas. And video uh, it's acid. It, the video is called How Bad Do You Want It? And the, and the video, I remember it's like a four minute video and it basically showed him striving, working out like crazy and, um, and Eric Thomas in the background was just hitting, you know, just punchline after punchline of deep provocative sort of uh, uh, messages. And um, after I saw that, I was just like, wow, like, that inspiration, that was that in itself was inspiring. So, Eric Thomas is someone who then I decided to like invest time in listening to and reading about because some of the things he says um, keep me on track. So there's some days where you know, things don't feel. You know, some days you feel like oh, I'm tired today or I don't want to train today, uh, and then you, if I ever feel like that, which, which is occasional. I mean, I'm only human. Then my iPod's next to me so I quickly click on that and he'll start shouting at me and I'll be like okay yeah cool let's get back to work and, and go from there. I think his dedication and drive to become a professional footballer is something that I greatly admire. He takes it very seriously, he's given up a lot to be where he is now and to kind of go on this journey to try to become a professional footballer. Even though where he lives is a nice area and he doesn't allow that to say this is enough, he still wants his career and I think that's what makes him stand out from other people because other people just will accept what they have and say, I'm okay, but he wants a career. It's literally driving through him every morning, every day. One thing that's really, really inspirational and just kind of meeting when I first met him and first kind of um, sort of added him on Instagram was the amount of followers and the amount of kind of likes and the amount of comments that he gets on his, his social media. I think it's incredible that someone that is literally just trying to make it as a footballer is inspiring so many questions and so many, so much dialogue on social media. 
to be fair, my social media stuff as well. Like I, I tend to plug a lot of my training, both on the ball and off the ball. And it's been weird the last six, six, seven months, or six months to a year. It, it really took off. He's not at the t he's not at the top level, but he's showing all the signs of someone that um, is is going to show inspiration to um, people that that want to get to the top level. He can inspire many people in many ways. It's not just sport. It could be life aspect. It could be relationship problems. He just has a very good inspirational package all in one. He's not just one genre. And I think that's what surprised me most about how he's inspired me. I've been, I've been out in town and stuff and I've met, physically met pe some of them. Like people have come up to me and be like, oh my gosh, you're, you know, you're Emmanuel. Like, you've seen, I've seen you on Instagram, I follow you in this, like, you really inspire me and, and I've had messages being sent uh, in my inbox and it, that, that in itself is amazing. I never thought that what I'd be doing would be reaching out to other people. Um, so when that happened, I was just like, I, I was just as surprised from their reaction as they were to see me. So you know, as humbling as it was, it, like that is another reason why you know, I, I, I keep myself motivated because if I realise that I'm having an effect on people, that then I definitely want to keep that up. For what every everything he's doing he's always um, getting a positive um, positive feedback which is great to see like um, and that's someone that that could use to inspire something that could be used to inspire anyone really if you if you see something like that you want to you want to do it yourself. So. He's always motivated he's always shouting on the pitch he's always understanding the game helping everybody around him not only set them talking, but actually really um, taking it on and, and showing it in, in, in the space that we all live in, which is social media as well. So I think um, that's the, I think he's most definitely shown a real drive and a real um, determination, which any athlete will tell you, or anyone in business will tell you, you need to get to the top. There's times where I'm waking up late to go to training with him and he's coming knocking at my door to get me out of bed and everything, his determination and I think his, his drive for it, he really wants it, like he's so determined to achieve what he wants. I believe I'm good enough to make it. There, there's no way I would have started this journey if I didn't have that self-belief. It's impossible to start, you know, to take all those risks and, and to go against, you know, people who you know, care about you and want the best for you, but they don't think that you have the right opinion. So in terms of self-belief, I fully believe I can make it. I don't have any doubts um, at all. Uh, like I said before, it's just a case of, you know, can I get seen? So if I'm given the opportunity, I feel as though I'm confident enough to try and take it. He's got a very unique mindset and his, what stands out with him is his determination. Like I've said, it's a very big thing and I think to come across someone like Aman is something special, something gifted. I, I owe it. I owe it to my parents. You know, they've, they've done so much and it's, it'll be one way of, of paying them back, especially you know all the worries that they're going through. Um, I'm a firm believer in that actions speak louder than words. So rather than me telling them, you know, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, it's best that I show them. And there'll be no better way to show them than by achieving what I've set out to do. I think this story here is a perfect example of what level of dedication you need to take to become a professional footballer. Whether you are six years old, whether you are 16, 24, like Emmanuel is. I've known him personally as a friend, as a coach, as a player, and that is a role model. In terms of what he does on and off the pitch, his diet, his nutrition, just like what I've said, what you need to be to become a footballer, he's got that dedication. My, my parents weren't from here um, and, you know, there's, it's said there's not many well-known Eritreans in professional football. Um, so, in a way, it's almost trying to create a legacy, you know, for future Eritrean kids and generations to, to look up to and say, look, you know, we, have, we have a professional Eritrean footballer amongst us, um, and he, you know, he's made it, and he even, you know, it took him this long, but you know, he still kept going, and he kept trying and being persistent. So, um, that's another, another sort of dream slash motivator of mine in that if I can <clears throat> if I if I'm doing it just for myself then yeah it's great but it's it's also pointless I have nothing to pass on to.
or have no one to pass it on to. Um, but like having having a, a folk or a vision like that where I can inspire a future generation, uh, especially those from, from my home country, um, that in itself is history. A lot of players have the ability, but it's whether or not, whether or not they maximise the opportunities that they're given. I thought he had a lot of potential to make it professionally because he was at a young age, but it's so difficult. And it's just about whether or not he takes any opportunities that he's given or if he's not given any opportunities, if he can create any himself. And age isn't really an issue. If you've got any ability, some of the older generation footballers, Ian Wright, Les Ferdinand, that didn't make it until they were a lot older, DJ Campbell. It's creating that opportunity and then what you can do with it once given the opportunity to become a professional footballer or a semi-professional footballer. Uh, I'm 24 now um, and in my head, my age doesn't matter. I think that it's just the sheer fact that I've dedicated so much to the cause and so much to the journey, uh, I've disregarded age because I think that's the limiting factor of a lot of people. Um, and you hear players who have been released from academies you know, they, as soon as they've been released, head down and they give up. Others are stopping, he's continuing. So what's happened is he's taking an opportunity. Someone else has stopped, he's gaining their opportunity. So age really isn't a number. Working in the academy, we obviously start from six years old up until scholars 16 to 19 years old. 24 is a difficult age, it is very difficult and the chances are not impossible, but you have to be realistic. So what you then need to think about is what other opportunities can you do? You can't go straight to a Premier League team. You can't go to a championship team. League one and league two are going to be difficult. So your roots are, do you go semi-professional? Do you go conference? Do you work your way abroad? It just takes one opportunity. That opportunity could be a trial, could be spotted in a game, sending your player profile and CV into a club, sending your video clips. If you get that one scout, that one coach that sees you and thinks, you know what, he's got potential, let me just have a look, it's then down. Why do I think I'm the exception? But I just, I just the amount of self-belief that I have, I just think that it's more of a case of I haven't been seen yet. I think that's the main thing. I don't think it's the case of I'm not good enough. Like everything I do is, or everything I try to do is of a professional standard. Just because I don't have a contract, it doesn't mean that I'm not a professional footballer. Like, my regimen is, is strict. You know, I, I dedicate five hours a day to training, so it's not, it's nothing new. If I was thrown into a professional environment, it would still be what I do on a daily basis now. Age is is um, is something that I guess we all we all struggle with. Um, I mean, uh, we all we all get older, but I feel like being playing professional football doesn't necessarily mean playing at the top top level, but playing professional football, playing every day and um, yes, um, Emmanuel was 24, but so was Ian Wright when he kind of made it. Um, he was just he was just about round about that age and he, he made it as a professional footballer at the top level. Not to say that it happens with everyone, but I feel like his drive and his determination will see him um, find himself in the game at, at, um, at, a, decent, at a great level because um, he's, he's driven and he's focused. So I think mentally you have to be very strong at that age to carry on pursuing football because ideally you'd want to make it between the age of 18 to 21 and be breaking into a first team but to be 24 and actually carry on pushing for your dream is, is just astonishing it's just truly mind, mind blowing to say to say oh, you know you're, you're too old to have a contract or too old to be a professional well I've already disregarded that fact and a lot of people have said that um, and yeah, it's weird. Like it's, it's it's got to the point where I've had to mentally be strong in terms of blocking people out. Yeah, I live well. I live literally a minute away from Queens Park Rangers Football Club, who well, just got relegated, but that doesn't matter. But they're they're a professional football club, and it's literally on my doorstep. So, you know, there's there's nights where the floodlight shines into my room, and I'm thinking, like that that should be me. I should be in there. You know, on the pitch playing, not in my room, trying to plan my next session. It, that is a constant reminder, almost a weekly reminder that look, that's the ambition, that's where you, that's what you want to be doing. Uh, so that keeps me in check sometimes as well, and, and um, put the work in. That's that's the only f phrase I'm going to have because it's simple. It's it's to the point. You know, if you don't put the work in, you don't expect a result from it. 
um, it's, you know, it's going to take hours. It's going to be hard. There's days you don't want to do it. You know, it's raining or it's, it's cold. Or I know or I've only got one football today or I've only, you know, I haven't got any cones. There's always a way of, of creating a training session or training environment for yourself. So try not to let any excuse get in the way of that. Always try and, and be uh, an optimist. Always try and find another alternative. So solutions are always better than problems. So always try and find a solution and make sure even if you've just got one ball and you've got socks or you've got one pair of, of shoes, that's all, that's all you need. I don't know many, <clears throat> hardly any 24 year olds, 20 year olds, 14 year olds that want to be in the game as much as he does. And you will get people that will say, I want to be a footballer. But then you ask them, okay, what are you doing about it? And they're not doing nothing about it. They're waiting for that opportunity to come to them when you can visibly see on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Emmanuel has that passion. And it's not just having that passion in front of a camera. What is he doing away from the camera? and how he takes his time when you're speaking to him. You can tell it's not just something that he wants for the money, for the women, for the cars, for the clothes. He actually has got that passion. And all it literally takes is one opportunity. There, there's millions of players out there um, who want the same thing that I do. Um, what I don't know is, are they doing the things that I'm doing? And likewise, I don't know what they're doing. So in the back of my mind, I've, that, that's always there. You know, am I doing more than the next player? And if I'm not, what is, what is more so um, yeah I mean it's I can't speak for everyone but I can say for myself that for what I'm doing now I, I'm fully confident that I'll make it Just for you